world has become very the, the world has become very confused the things that are happening today are things that it surprises those who have an understanding but then the enemy is very wily and as much as we know that if our children are brought up in the way of the Lord, then the kingdom of the devil, the kingdom of darkness will be in jeopardy. He also knows, the enemy knows, that if he can capture the children from their youth, then he can destroy their future. He can destroy their purpose. But we as the church, the body of Christ, the people of God, we must be wise. And we must take the cue from the scriptures. In Proverbs 22, I'm reading to you from verse 6. The scripture says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. You'll find it says train. The word means aim the child in, age the child in. Give the child direction. If you get a little baby, a toddler, who is not walking yet, and you put the baby down, but the baby is crawling, the tendency is for the baby to go this way, stop, come back, go this way, stop, come back. But if you put a ball or something in front of him, he will go towards that object. That's what God expects, that we put a goal ahead of the child, so that the child, child is not wandering here and there. Here it says train, direct, instruct, make them focus on the way to go, edge them in, train the child in the way they should go. When they grow up, it says they will remember. I've read stories of people who went away, but because of the beginning, because of the foundation the Lord had laid for them, Thank God they were able to retrace their steps. But we don't need to allow that to happen. So here it says, train them up in the way they ought to go so that they are not misunderstanding it, so that they are not losing sight of purpose and focus. Train them up in the way they should go. There is blessedness. There is blessing. There is reward. In Genesis chapter 18, look at the promise God is, he gave to Abraham, and that same promise is for you and for me. Please turn your Bibles with me. This is not my word. This is the word of the living king. In Genesis chapter 18, Genesis chapter 18, I'm reading to you from verse 17. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? You see, God was contemplating. And as you are here today, Maybe you're not even married. Even if you're married, whatever the case is, God looks at you and he has a plan. And he's saying, my plan, do I hide it from this person? Do I hide it from that person? He was telling us, he said, should I hide it from Abraham? But there was, there was a reason for him not wanting to hide it from Abraham. Look at the next verse of scripture. Seeing that Abraham shall surely, are you following me? Become a great and mighty nation. And it says, it won't stop there. All nations of the earth shall be blessed in him, through him. It's the same promise the Lord has given to you and to me. He wants to help us. He wants to bless us. And he's saying, he wants to make us great. But why does he want to make us great? And how will it be possible? Verse 19. He says, for I know him, I know him, that he, Abraham, he will, are you reading with the Bible? He didn't say he will beg his children. He said he will command his children and his house oh, after him, and they shall keep the way, the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, so that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken to him. If God is going to give you a promise and a blessing, God expects you to lead your children, your words, the people that come with you, your household, in the way such that 
Because of that, he knows the future is certain. He knows there is a, a, a continuity. You are blessed. The blessing is not wasted. The children continue in the blessing. God is not wasteful. God doesn't want to bless you. And then everything is frittered away. He says, I know Abraham. The question is this, does he know you? We cannot relate with you. He cannot teach you. He cannot guide you if he does not know you. He said, I know Abraham. He will command. I am sure about him. Can the Lord say about you, I am sure about so and so. I am sure about that person. You need to answer that question. And you remember what we read now, that the blessing he promised is because of that. He wants the continuity. He wants the perpetuity of the blessings upon the lineage. And he said, I know him. That's what he will do. And for you to know him, let me show you something in Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Turn your Bibles there. This is so very important for the Christendom today because we are sleeping in the churches. We are sleeping in our homes. We do things that don't please God. And we expect God to bless us. In Psalm 115, I'm reading to you from verse 11. It says, ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You want God to be your help in training the children in living and living a right life. Fear the Lord. Many times as Christians, we say, you, you shouldn't have fear. Please, my brother, my sister, you must fear the Lord. You may not fear the brother sitting next to you. You may not fear anybody, but fear the Lord. When you read in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, he said, I will tell you who you, should, who you should fear. Don't fear this. Don't fear this that will kill you. But fear him that is able to put you in hell forever. That's what the scriptures, he says, fear the Lord in verse 12. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless us. Only four people want God's blessing. Amen. He will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Then he says, he will bless the house of, you can put your name there. He will, he will, he will bless my house. He will bless my Not house. Not only that, he says, he will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them. See again, that fear the Lord. He says, both small. It doesn't matter who you are. If you are small, he will bless you. Amen. As long as you fear him. In verse 14. The Lord shall increase you more and more. But then he doesn't stop there. He says you and your children. Amen. So you see the picture now. The picture is number one. God is looking at you and he's saying, you have children. Clean them up. Then he goes on and he says, I know why I'm saying that. I want to bless you and I want the blessing to continue and flow in your family. He says, not only that, because when you become old, you need those children. The blessing is not only monetary. They are there to suffer and stand by you. He says, train them up. Train them up. And then he goes to the latter part and he says, for you to be able to do that, fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. I pray that in truth, we will fear the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Only five people want to fear the Lord. Amen. I will fear the Lord. I will fear the Lord. So God is love, but he must be honored. You know, the scripture says in the book of Psalm 2, it says that kiss him, kiss the son, lest he be angry with you. You know that kissing is not kissing, and it says kiss him, that is honor him, lest he be angry with you. Look at the outline with me. It says, are you there looking at that? I mean, there are great blessings in us training a child and there is indescribable sorrow if we fail to train our children. Indescribable sorrow. In Proverbs chapter 10, Proverbs chapter 10, just open your Bible as I'm you know, calling the verses of scripture. See what God has penned down for you and for me. You say, well, the child is too small. He says, my brother, my sister, indescribable sorrow if you fail or refuse to train the children. Don't allow Brother Bernard to disturb anybody there. He came very late to church today, so he should not disturb anybody. Are you there? 
Proverbs 10, I'm reading to you from verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon. It says, a wise son. What happens? Make it a glad father. But a foolish son is the heaviness. You know when you find the mother just does, hmm. The father just does, hmm. They have spoken and spoken. They are tired. All they do is, hmm. It's a foolish son. A foolish daughter brings heaviness to the heart of the parents. But it's not their fault. And that's what we're looking at today. This is what is so very important. The outline for this is many people today, they tend to leave the training of their children to other people. This is wrong. You know, they leave the training of their children to the teachers in school. They leave the training of their children to pastor. They leave the training of their children to uh, assistance with sociality. They leave the training of their children to the norms of the society. That's not what God said. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. Look at what God said. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, I'm reading to you from verse 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of who? Of the Lord, of the Lord. In fact, both in the Old Testament and New Testament, God has that responsibility placed upon the father and the mother in the home, that they are the ones responsible. That is what God wants. That is what God has said. Look at Deuteronomy chapter six. Deuteronomy chapter six. Please turn there with me. The training of the children. Say, so, well, you know, there was one story I had like that. The mother said, ah, Levi, no, no. I don't know what she will go and tell them in school, no. If she's going to tell them anything in school, she's no more your child. She's already the, ch the child of those people. And it's not his, her fault. It's not his fault. It's your fault because you did not start the training on time. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, because of time, I'll just pick verse... verse uh, let me read one or two verses. Look at verse one. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. You have come to this land to possess it. And God is saying, you are going there. Listen to these commandments. Verse two, it says that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God. Again, fear the Lord thy God to keep some oh, oh. all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee. Thou and thy son and thy son's son sometime, all the days of your life and that thy days God says it's not for some time. Every moment of your life, you teach them, you teach your son's son, you teach, you, it just continues so that your days will be long, so that they will not cut short your life, so that it will not become a disgrace. Look at verse 7 of that same chapter, because, and thou shalt teach them how diligently. diligently you watch, you plan, you make sure in the morning, in the day, in the night, you find a way to model their lives after the word of God, after the commandments, after the statutes of God. He says, you will teach them. He says, the children, and they, shall, and they shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou, God makes it clear. Every moment of their life is for instruction. You are keeping them in the way of the Lord. And it doesn't matter the society. Samuel was living in a decayed and terrible surrounding. And yet he came out clean and pure. Our children will be clean and pure in this land in Jesus' name. Amen. So that the blessings of God will come upon our lives. So that the blessings of God will remain and abide upon our families. So that God can say, I know them. They are my inheritance. They are my heritage. Look at the outline. It says Absalom, Esau, 
diner. There are bad examples that illustrate this anomaly. You know the story of um, Absalom. Absalom refused the control of his father. Have you have you read how he ended? The heavens rejected him. The ground rejected him. His hair, long hair, which he used to do guy, was caught up in a tree. He hung in the tree. He was so proud. He chased his father from the throne. And today, is that not what we are breeding? You find children. The father says this. They bang the door and walk out on their father. Is that not like Absalom? Exactly like Absalom. And we, it's because, you know, you know, you know, David did not have time. He was fighting too many battles. You know, David did not have time. He was chasing too many women. <laughs> you know, he didn't have time to train anybody. But God did not absolve him from that responsibility. Do you know what he did? God made him suffer. Fourfold, the children were dying like this in his presence. They were dying. It was because he didn't, he didn't, he didn't train them. I, have you forgotten? I'm non raped Tema. Uh, this one did this. Absalom killed that. All of them, they were just, he suffered terribly. May we not suffer like David. Amen. Amen. You see Absalom, you talk about Esau. Esau, if you read in Genesis chapter 28, the mother, the parents of Esau, they said, Jacob, go and marry from our people. Don't go and marry unbeliever. They showed him where to go. Esau said, I will not marry from that place. I will marry from among the Israelites. Of course, you know the problem we have today in the world. It's because they refused. They refused the training of God. They refused the counsel of God because the parents ignored it. Esau was like that. He was a man of the flesh. No time for prayer. No time to serve God. No time to go with the things of God. No time at all. And you see what happened to him. He went. He lost his inheritance. May our children not lose their inheritance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't know what greatness God has packed into the lives of these children. And if you allow them to go to waste, the fault is not theirs. The fault is yours. You talk about Dinah. When you read in Genesis chapter 34, the Bible, let me show you that one. Let me show you. Sometimes many of us, we cannot control our children. You say, ah, these children, look at Genesis 34 and see what happened to her. Genesis 34, 3, 4. Please turn your Bibles there. I read to you from verse 1. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which he bear unto Jacob, Jacob should, who should have known better, who should have been training them up properly because he was of God. Look at what it says. He went out to see what? Daughters the, the daughters of the land. And what happened? Verse 2. And when Shechem, the son of Hamon, the Hevite, when the prince of the country saw her, he took her forcefully and he lay with her and did what? Many, many, many of our children were allowing them to be defiled, allowing them to be instructed in the wrong way when they take and imbibe the wrong things. Don't you understand that they are defiled? When their heart is not with God, don't you know that they are defiled already? Not only when they are sexually molest molested, once we allow them to veer off, they are defiled. God will not touch anything that defiles it. And it's important today, I'm believing the Lord, that we in this generation, we in this church, we Christians will not allow our children to be defiled in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at what the outline says further. It says, their parents did not seem to have had much input in their upbringing. But Jacob, Anna, Amram, and Jochebed must have been very proud of their words as they excelled in life and ministry. You want to look at Joseph. They brought sin to Joseph. Joseph said, no, I won't touch sin. My parents know that I must not touch sin. Even at a young age, he will not touch sin. He had been trained. Maybe Jacob did not have enough time to train the others. Maybe he spent his time on Joseph. But every child you have, you have a responsibility to train them. Not just one of them. Thank God for Joseph. Look at the, uh, 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 and uh, who was that? Samuel. I've mentioned Samuel. Time will, for, will not permit us to look at 
in the midst of Ophni and Phineas, in the midst of all the dead things happening, they were taking other people's wives and messing up with them. Samuel would not do that. Training, training. If you go and read First Samuel chapter one, the mother weaned him. The mother spent time in, in instructing him, teaching him what he was taught when he was small and where he was put when he grew up, he did not go away from it. How I pray that our children will never ever depart from what we are teaching them in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, Moses, even while with the fact that he stayed in the house of Pharaoh, he did not forget his roots. And you know, the fact that your children go to the school with unbelievers, they must not forget their roots. If you allow them to forget, it, you know, today, some people, will, you know, they come home from school and then, then you go, the children, they go out with friends, you don't even know where they are, you don't know what they are doing, like Diana. You don't know already what they are co combining, what they are concocting together. I just say, my child, you know, and many of us, as long as the child is eating and is strong, we say we are bridging them. As long as the child is happy and he can put on clothes, the child is happy. That's, that's not training. That's not guiding them. That's not the way God wants them to be. The way God wants them to be, we must learn. I said we will learn. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's like most of us are bachelors and sisters. There are no people who have children here. I said we will train our children up. Yeah. We will follow our path Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. What the outline says, these ones, they were icons worthy of emulation in the nation. If we train our words in God's way, we shall have joy over there. Look at Proverbs chapter 23. Oh, what wonderful, you know, that you can start up in the morning and say, thank God. You just wake up and you say, thank God for this, thank God for C, thank God for B, thank God for what God has done. You just continue to thank God for their lives. You just continue to honor God. In Proverbs chapter 23, are we there? Proverbs 23. I'm going to read to you from verse 24. It says, the father of the righteous, are you there? Yes, sir, sir. Shall greatly rejoice. And he that begetted the wise child, joy of them. Your child is, you know, you want to sleep. It's not like they called you yesterday. <sighs> he, has, he has fought somebody there. And then they said, ah, look at. And then the next day, eh, in fact, he used pencil. So, so, you know, every time, and you always, it says here, you will have joy. There is peace. In verse 25, thy father and thy mother, they shall be glad. Amen. And she that bear thee shall rejoice. rejoice. How wonderful it is when we rejoice that we have beautiful children, wonderful children, children serving the Lord. He said, where is your son? He said, he's gone now, he's preaching. He said, where is your daughter? She's the one leading the choir. In the church, where is that one? You are, you are, you are at peace because you know that eventually, when you make it to heaven, they are coming there to meet you. But when you are not sure and you are just thinking, Well, I don't even know, God, God, but the problem has been the beginning. Let's look at point one gifts of children for parents. Children are gifts from God, they are what they are gifts from God. Let me tell you something. I don't want you to miss this at all. Please listen. You see, if a person gives you a gift, there's a tendency the person will leave the gift and forget that he gave you because he gave you. Do you understand? If I were to give you a car now, I have only one, so I can't give you that. But <laughs> Praise the Lord. If I were to give, you know, you, I will not come tomorrow and say, did you put petrol in it? If you don't put petrol, this is your problem with yes. the car. You understand? If I were to give a gift to anyone, that's the end of it. But do you know it's not like that with God? When God gives you a gift, He monitors you with the gift. Check everything God gives you. He gives you salvation. He comes back and He says, Go and sin no more. He gives you sanctification and He tells you, Increase in knowledge, increase in wisdom, increase in grace, increase in love. Is the one that gave the gift. It gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit and it still comes back and says, use it like this. Use it like that. It's watching you. Go into the world. It gives you any gift God gives you. It gives you the gift of a talent. 
is coming back to ask you, what have you done with the talent? God monitors every gift. So it is with children. He gives you the gift of a child. God is coming back to ask you, how did you deal with that child? In Psalm 113, Psalm 113, it's gift. It's God's gift. How I pray that the gifts of God, you know, and sometimes you find people who will tell you, I can't do this again because of this, my child. I can't serve God again. It's my child. I can't come to, you know, somebody told me once, I've never forgotten that story. I said, sister, you're not coming to uh, Bible study anymore. You're not coming to the revival hour. I said, the time we do Bible study is the time I feed my child. <laughs> so the child is greater than God. The giver of the gift. In Psalm 113, I'm reading to you from verse 9, he maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother praise ye the lord you are here today you are saying god when is my own god has said he will make you the mother of children he will do it in jesus name Amen. he's the one that gives the gift they are gifts from him from his presence they should not be sources of sorrow and heartache for us our children should be a blessing around our tables when you read in Psalm 128, you know, you come and you sit down and they are there and there is peace, there is joy. You know, you know that their future is okay because they are walking in the Lord and walking in faith. And you say, well, thank God for these children. They are around your table. You want to look at the story of Philip in Acts chapter 21, beautiful story. The Bible says he had four daughters, four daughters. All of them prophetesses. Every single one of those children. What happened? He trained them. What happened? He prayed with them. What happened? He held them in his hand. What happened? He directed them. You cannot have four prophetesses because it is not hereditary. The fact that I'm a pastor, <laughs> if I don't train my children, doesn't mean they will become pastors. In fact, most of the time, children of pastors, they are the worst you can find. Because some of them, they will see how church members have maltreated their, their, their father. They say, me, I will never be there. See what is happening to my daddy. Then they will go far. Some of them will say, yeah, look at what they did to my mother. God forbid. But if you train them, and you are not the type of person, every time you, you and your wife, you will talk about the pastor in their presence. You destroy, not only do you destroy yourself, you destroy them because they will never listen to what the pastor is saying again. Never, because they have seen their parents talking about the pastor. Forget, the pastor is gone, there's nothing. They themselves, they are out of, they are out of the church, except God's mercy. So children never come back. But the Bible says he gives those gifts. And when he gives those gifts, he gives them to the parents. And then when he gives them to them, he wants them to enjoy their fellowship. He wants them to look at the children and then provide for the children. And then in the latter years of their days, they also will be able to rest on the children. The question comes to you again, my brother, my sister. How well are you teaching the children? How well are you guarding the children? How well are you guiding the children? How much are you loving the children? Let me tell you one thing. You cannot love the children more than God loves them. God loves them more than you can ever love them. And until you submit them to the love of Christ, you will destroy them. You need to bring them to the Lord. I say, this child, God, you gave me. Thank you. Help me with them. And you are standing, you are come, you know, and it's never too late. Look at Psalm 120, just to show you, just to buttress the point, Psalm 128. We can even stop in 127 first. Psalm 127, I read to you from verse 3. Lo, children and heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is the Lord's reward. Psalm 128, verse 3. Thy wife will be a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children, like holy plants, 
round about they are there. And you know, God has promised that your children will be saved if you allow them to be. Please understand, if your children are not saved, it's not their fault. It's your fault as a, as a parent. And I want to emphasize, if you wait until they are three, they are four, before you start training them, you've lost them. Please, church, wake up. Church, wake up. Too many times, hey, this child, hey, no, no, no. <laughs> Acts chapter 16. Let me show you what God promises every child of God. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. I read to you from verse 30. Are we there? And brought them out. This was Paul and Silas. And he said to them, this was the jailer with Paul and Silas, says, what must I do to be saved? Verse 31. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou and thy house, and thy house, and thy house, and thy house. Whatever God will not permit for you, he will not permit it for your children. That's important. He will not. So when you start to think, well, there is a different standard for the children. There's a different standard for the youth. You lie badly. And you prepare them for evil. And it is your fault. And it is your fault. I pray where you have missed it, there will be a turnaround. Amen. Amen. Thank God for this side of the church. I will face the, I won't talk to this side again because I can't hear amen from here. I said there will be a turnaround. Amen. 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 There will be a turnaround in Jesus' name. Amen. Because let's go to point two. Let's go to point two. What is what 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 is the title of point two? The goal of child training is my parents. Goal. There is a goal. Obviously, there must be a goal, but there must be goals for spiritual or bringing of the child. Goals for a spirituality, education, and career. The problem with many of us is we focus on the education. We focus on the career. We forget the morals. We forget the spirituality. We forget that that child also, you know, when you read in Revelation 20, the scripture says, I saw before the white throne judgment those that were great and those that were small. Six years old, they will be in front of the great throne judgment. If they have reached the age of accountability and you didn't lead them to Christ, they will die in their sin. Do you think that you know that four year old children are, are committing sin? I don't know whether you saw a particular tape or what is it called? A clip on, on inter, uh, internet sometime, maybe last year or year before, of a child of about three that was teaching the mother. I, I don't want to say what he was teaching. She, this child was teaching the mother. And the mother said, where did you learn this from? I won't tell you where they learned it from. So that, <laughs> but I'm telling you, three-year-old child was teaching the mother immorality. As he comes, he didn't, you don't understand. So if that child has reached the age of accountability and you are doing nothing about directing and instructing the child, you are fault. It is your fault. And many of us today, there's no time. It's only the children are going well in school. They have promoted you. Ah, thank God my money was not wasted. Then you buy another uh, cake for the girl. And then after some time, uh, the, the, the boy comes home. He says, ah, do you know what happened? They gave me a gift in school. Ah, praise the Lord, my son. Then you buy a bicycle. So you ride bicycle. I said bicycle, you will ride into heaven. There are goals that you set for the bringing up of the children. And if those goals are not being you know, uh, followed and you know, carried out, again, I tell you, parents, it's your fault. And God will ask you, what did I say? Yes. You didn't say it. <laughs> many people, it's like many people here, they know that God is going to ask them some questions. You better, you better do something about it. You better do something about it. And that is the truth. God will ask you, that soul I give to you, that gift I give to you, what have you done with it? Just buy them food, buy them gifts. 
This child is not, this child he insulted an adult. Did you insult an adult? Oh, don't do that again. Is that the end of it? There must be correction. There must be just, he said, he said Abraham will bring them up in justice and judgment. He will bring them up in justice and judgment. How I weep many times, I see children that act as if there is no God and they are children of Christians. Children of Christians. Come back with me to the outline. We should have specific goals for each child. Anna had a goal set for Samuel. What did you want Samuel? To, what did she want Samuel to be? A servant of God to, to the whole nation. And from when she he was small, let me show you. First Samuel, come there quickly. First Samuel, she had a goal, and she didn't mean was she was not careless about. It. First Samuel, are we there? I'm reading to you from chapter one. Verse 27. See what let's see what Anna said here in verse 27. She said, For this child I prayed, and the Lord has given me my petition, which I asked of in verse 28. Therefore, also I have lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. They made up their minds that this child is going to serve God. If you go and remember what she would do, they, and you know they would go to Shiloh every year, and then she would go and buy clothes, newer clothes, and make sure she knew someone was being trained in the Lord, and she was doing everything to support that training. Doing everything to make sure that they support that training. You find somebody is trying to correct your child in the church, and you're angry that they are correcting your child in the church. You know, I, I had the story of a, a particular uh, child that went straight, just got inside the church and went straight to the pulpit area. And then the usher was trying to save his life because in the Old Testament, if you do that, you die. And today, though, they don't die physically, they die spiritually. And the usher said, no, don't do that. Don't go there. Don't go there. And the parents were angry. They said, we're not coming to the church again. Because the church is playing place. You know, and some of us, we are parents, when we are coming with our babies, we come with toys. We bring toy with our baby to church. So that the baby will make noise in the church with toy. We are training them. That's not training. They are coming to stand against the things of God. In the presence of God. You're coming to do anything you want. No, it doesn't happen that way. When you're training the child, you let them understand that this is the house of God. We don't play there. Before you bring them, you have already instructed them. Goals for their spirituality. Goals for them to understand the difference between the normal and the you know, extraordinary from the spiritual and the carnal. You let them understand from when they are small. Buying them gifts is not the answer. Anna said, this one, you are going to serve God. And that's why we're here today, you know. Joshua will serve God. Amen. Even Caleb cannot escape. <laughs> John is already in trouble, already is there. They cannot escape. Can, can divine escape? No way. Naomi is in trouble. She cannot escape. None of them. The Lord will help us Amen. to guide and guard our children. Amen. We set goals for them. Mordecai, she trained Esther. And we see the importance of training a female child. You know, there are people, they come from a particular area. I won't tell you the country. Because in that area of that country, They don't, they don't um, value much the female children. They say, I will train my son. I hope there's nobody here that is doing that. Then they will say, this one, she's going to marry. I don't need to train her. See the training that Mordecai gave to Esther. It was Esther that saved the whole nation from destruction. Mordecai could not help. There were other men in that mission at that time. They couldn't help. It was Esther 
that said, if I perish, I perish. I stood up and saved the whole nation from destruction because Mordecai trained that. Look at Esther chapter two. I want to show you this in Esther chapter two. That's why it's important. Whether they are male or female, we must train them. We must do what? We will train them. In Esther chapter two. I read to you from verse, let me read verse, um, let me first start from verse seven. Okay, verse seven says, and he brought up Adasa. That is Esther. He's explaining to us, it's the same person. His uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. And the maid was fair and beautiful. Whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. He was training her. He brought her in. This, this, this child was beautiful. But he didn't say because she's beautiful, he will not train her. Some people, they look at beauty. They forget that beauty is vain. Beauty is for a time. It is the inner man of a, of a human being that matters most. In verse uh, 10, jump there with me. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not. Do you know at this time that Esther was no more living with Mordecai? But the instruction that the father that the Mordecai gave she was she was keeping it. She was no wonder the tutelage of, but what she was taught, she was saying, she didn't say, she said, Mordecai, I told her what to do and what not to do. And she was keeping that word. That's training. She didn't forget the things she had been told. And I tell you, if you train them from when they are young, they won't forget it. I can assure you, they won't forget it. If you are a prayerful person, you are praying. You are instructing, you are directing, you are watching. They see your life. And that's another problem. Many of us do what I say. It's not what I do. And that's the problem we have with the children. They see you telling a lie. You know, tell Pastor I'm not pick the phone. Tell, tell Pastor I'm busy. And you are not busy. You only don't want to answer. That child is gone. Because they destroy this faith. Tell pastor that uh, I'll call him later. Because you know if pastor calls you, it's evangelism time. And you don't want to go to evangelism. You won't even pick the phone, just push it. And they see you pushing the phone under the pillow. You don't need to even say anything. It's enough for them. They've, they've learned. People learn more with what they see. What you say. They learn more. Especially our children. My daughter was talking to me recently, and she said there are some in, in the in the children class where she where she teaches the children, teaches the youth in the church where she is. And she said, My phone was like this. I did this. And the children came to me and said, We know they were watching her. Everything you do, they are watching you. They are watching you. When you are coming to church, you come to church at 10, 30, 11. You are teaching them. When they grow up, that you used to go as 11, 11, 30. You destroy the future of the children because of your carelessness, the careless living. You are not teaching them to reverence God, to honor God, to put God first in their lives. You don't teach them. They say, well, uh, uh, where, where we live is far. Oh, when you are going to work, it's not far. But on Sunday, you teach the children the wrong thing from when they are small. In verse uh, 20, turn there with me quickly. Verse 20 says, Esther had not yet showed her kindred nor her people as Mordecai had charged her. But Esther did the commandment of Mordecai, like as when she was brought up with him. She would think first, what will, my, what will my father say? What will God say? What will my father say? Before she would do anything. The type of training. How about Timothy? Let me show you quickly. 
come with me to Second Timothy quickly. Second Timothy. Then we'll go to point three. Second Timothy. Please turn your Bibles there quickly. Second Timothy chapter one. Are you there? I'm waiting for you. Are you there? Yes. Second Timothy chapter one. That place is not a difficult place to get in the Bible. Amen. Amen. You know, and when you allow your children, when they come to church, you know, you may think they cannot read. I have, please permit me to say this. By the time my children are about seven, they know where Jeremiah is. They know where Hosea is. They know where Amos is in the Bible. They don't go and open the back of the Bible like this. No, no, no. For, even adults, when you tell them, open Amos, they will first go to the content page. Yes. And then you are coming to church, you give them phone, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Bible on their phone. While they are in church, they are browsing. Yeah. You, go, you won't buy them phone to read, uh, Bible to read. You give them phone to come to church with. Yeah, this is a money. new generation. It is a new generation. That's why sometimes you see some girls who just come to their parents. In the church, they say, uh, Daddy, I'm gay. And it's because they are using the phone. You are a Christian, but your child is gay. Where, where are you going to start from? Because you are not monitoring anything. Because you are not praying. Because you are not watching them. You are not seeing what they are doing. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned face that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee, also, you see this family, the grandmother taught the mother, the mother taught the child, it flowed like that. They had gold for the child to live right before God. There were goals. They taught them. They showed them the way. Timothy was helped. All children, the outline says, all children should be trained without discrimination. Our efforts must be geared primarily to get them saved, sanctified, and they must be helped to serve the Lord. They must be helped. Look at chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. That same 2 Timothy just opened to chapter 3. And I'm reading to you from verse 15. And that from a child also thou, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ. The fact that they are coming to talk with you doesn't mean they are saved. When my first son told me when he got saved, I was shaking because I thought he was saved before then. <laughs> so one day he called me and said, For this day, this day, this day, I said, Yeah. <laughs> Start with the children when they are small. Have a goal for their lives. Don't wait until they are corrupted and you are crying up and down looking for a way. If you want peace and you want to rejoice, Start with them and hold your ground. You know what I used to tell my children? By the grace of God, I have four children. So I can talk. It's not that uh, I'm telling you a story. Sister Joy knows I have four children. That's the joy of the wife of Bernard. They came late together. They don't talk to one another. You know, I wake up late. My wife would have kicked me. You're sleeping too much now. <laughs> and if she's the one, oh yes, now I will kick her and turn. I don't mean the type of kick you are thinking about. So I mean the love kick. Praise the name of the Lord. So like, you don't go home and go and kick your wife. I say, Pastor said you kick your wife. No. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I can tell you, my brother, my sister, because I understand what it means to bring up children in the way of the Lord. I know. You pay the price. You stand firm. I will tell them, I said, look, the day you tell me you are not doing what I said according to the scriptures, 
you are no more my child. You are a government child. And I mean it. And I mean it. But today it's not like that. I love my child. Uh, cover him up. Cover, cover her up. Keep covering them up. Until, you know, let me tell you a story. I told the leaders this story last week. There was a particular family. They were living close to us at the time, many years ago, probably about 14, 15 years ago. You see, people are talking in the church when the pastor is preaching. That's part of our indiscipline. This is church, the house of God. We must be serious, we must be focused. So I was telling the leaders this story about a particular family. That child went to a Christian school. The parents, they left the church where they were. They came and then they sent the child to a Christian school. And when the child went to that school, they told them in school, you dress like this, you behave like this, you do like this, you don't do this. They were not yet members of the church. So they, when the child came home, they said this. I said, no, no, I can't do that. The Bible says this. Then they said this again. The child said, no, I can't do that. This is what the Bible says. They said, nonsense. They changed everything. They turned the girl's head upside down. After about two years, the child will come home with carabinieri and say, my father is a wicked man. Arrest him. With carabinieri. Then because she's planning evil, Instead of her to wait for the father to talk to her, she won't wait. She will go ahead to call the, I don't know how many times the man went to the police station. When the Bible says you will have indescribable sorrow, the father will do, the father will come again and say, uh, so and so, follow us. What again? Say your daughter came to report you. She, he didn't say anything to the girl, but the girl was planning ahead so that he will not be able to talk. But he was the one that told the girl not to mind Christian principles. They were the ones that told the girl, forget what the church is saying. I think the girl is on the third husband now. And they are Christians. The girl even for, resigned that Christianity and became a Muslim. Oh, you don't understand. These things you do, you think it, does, it has repercussions. Let's rise up and do the right thing for our children. Let's wake up and lead them. Look at the Bible says, from a child, Timothy, you knew the scriptures, which is what brought you onto salvation. Nothing can bring them to salvation. It is the scriptures. Let's go to point three. When this happens, there will be gratitude. Those children, they will thank you. In the future, they will thank you. In the future, they will see you and say, Father, thank you for keeping us. Thank you for showing us the way. Thank you for loving us. That's true love. Not all this, uh, uh, you know, you want to do it. Uh, don't mind them. No, no. Not those ones. True love is the one that takes people. You know, there's no true love anywhere than the agape love. The love of Christ. That's the only one. And here, when you take the children like that, they will show you gratitude in the future. If you train your children now, spending quality time with them and putting all your resources into what you are doing, they will be grateful and helpful in the future. They will, they will praise you. They will thank you. I'm telling you the truth because I know how it feels. Then they will come again and say, uh, Daddy, Mommy, we see that uh, this is your fridge. We try to take something inside it. Even the thing is not cold. They will replace the fridge. Then they will come another time. They say, ah, why are you? Then they change it. Then they come another They will show you gratitude. Because their life will be on track. They will bless you in the day, bless you in the night. Yeah. Very important. In Proverbs 31, Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. Please turn your Bibles there. Proverbs 31. 
training of the children is a beautiful, beautiful experience. We all will enjoy this experience in Jesus' name. In Proverbs 31, I'm reading to you from verse 28. Our children, they arise up and they call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. You know, it's both the husband and the wife. They are involved in this great task. The mother must be there, watching over them, direct. The father must be there. You know, both of you are speaking the same thing. Not the one that, when the father is not at home, it's not at home. Then they, you give them wrong indoctrination. See, this is not the way with my own parents, but you know, don't mind him. That child is gone. It must be one voice. Both parents, parents have one voice over the children. The moment you have two voices, you destroy them. Because they know that if father is the strict one, then they will run to the mother when the father is not there. If the mother is the one, they, and you know, there are parents that are just like that. When you come, say, don't worry, don't worry. Just, you want to go out. The child just came in. You want to go again? Go. Then they come back at nine o'clock in the night. Ah, where are you coming from? Yeah, I was with my friend there. The food is on the table. Which food is on the table? <laughs> the Lord will have mercy on you. Yeah. He just leave the children to run riot. And then you are thinking that uh, there is no gratitude. Gratitude. The children will never forget the law and instructions of their parents. Emphasis. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child. When he's old, he will not depart from it. The bond with parents is important. When you read the story of Jesus himself, you need to know that Jesus bonded even with the fact that he was our savior. But in the days of his flesh, when you read in Luke chapter two, the parents are gone. They remember, where's our child? They came back. They found him in the midst of teachers of the world. But not only that, if you remember on the cross, he didn't forget them. He didn't forget the love, he said. John, see your mother. Mother, he left there, he made sure the bond was there. He never forgot. I'm praying that there will be the bond in the family. Amen. Where your heart is meet with your children, so you know what they are doing. You know, I've ne my, the schooling I did was little, not so much. My children did a lot more schooling than myself. But I know much more about their studies than... <laughs> My wife will call me and say, are you the one that will take the certificate? <laughs> I'm talking about bonding. When they are going to wake up to, 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 to read, I know the time. I will set my alarm. I will wake up with them. I will see what they are doing. When they need to do this, sometimes I'm waking up three times in the night because this one wants to start reading at one. This one wants to start reading at three. This, in those days, thank God I'm free now. Amen. <laughs> You also will be so free. Amen. But you must do it first before you will be free. <laughs> you must go through it before you can be free. Amen. It's very, very important. You cannot be free until you have done it. The Rechabites, they kept the instructions they were given. Their obedience brought the pronouncements of God's blessings and favor upon their entire household and their generations after them. You know that. Let me just read that place to you. Jeremiah chapter 35. Anytime I read that place, I always sit down and think again. This was not in this dispensation of the Holy Spirit. This was at a time when, and they didn't tell us that the, the, the father was a prophet. They didn't tell us that. They only said that the man told them, this is what you will do. This is what you will not do. And even when the prophet came, let's read it together. Jeremiah 35. Are we there? Yes, Jeremiah 35, I'm reading to you from verse 18. The scripture says, And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, because ye have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab, your father, and kept all his precepts, and done according unto all that he has commanded you. Verse 19. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, son of Rechab, shall not want a man 
to stand before me forever. You know what they did? They only said, they only, the prophet came and he said, uh, you people, you are going to drink now. I'm sure if Pastor Anthony comes here next Sunday, God forbid, and he brings one bottle of gin, you know, hot drink, <laughs> and he says, today, I have revelation. You know, it's not possible, man. It's not possible. <laughs> I have revelation. God said we should. And then he holds the thing in his hand like this. Many people that have been doing it in secret, he will just quickly go. I said, Pastor, this is the church we like. <laughs> but you will stop doing it in secret now. I know you may. You still want to continue to do it in secret. I said, you will stop doing it in secret now. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. The Lord will help us. Amen. So there are people they like when they come to church, they are sanctimonious. But when they get into the crowd, they jump inside the bush. You don't see what they are doing again. They forget the word of God. They forget the word of God. And they start to act as the carnal people, the natural men and women. They act as if there is no tomorrow. They act as if tomorrow will never come. Tomorrow will come. Tomorrow will come. That's why it is important for you and for me, my brother and my sister. This recapitulates. They said, "Our father told us not to prophet. We hear you. We know you're a prophet to the nation, but we won't do it." He stood. I pray you will stand. Amen. When other people are saying, "Let's do it," don't worry. It doesn't matter. We will stand. Amen. The Rechabites too. We will stand. Amen. We will stand for the Lord. Amen. We will live for the Lord. Amen. And you know, when that happens, God will show favor to you. Amen. I'm telling you, favor all around you. Amen. The things many of us have is nothing compared to what God wants to do for us. I don't know whether you understand what I said. Amen. The blessings you have now is nothing compared to the blessings that God wants to give to you. If you will come to him, he will favor you. Amen. He will favor your children. Amen. He will favor your family. Amen. That is what God is waiting for. He told Abraham, Abraham, I will tell him my secrets. God wants to tell you his secrets. He said, Abraham, when you bring up your children, that is the condition. So that you will be a blessing now, you will be a blessing in the future. You will be a blessing. Blessing to this nation. Amen. Blessing to the people around you. Amen. Because the Bible says in Daniel chapter 1, God favored Daniel. He put favor upon him because he was committed to God. When you are committed to God, your children committed to God, favor will follow you. Amen. The Bible says favor will wrap you around like a shield. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Favor. In the day, favor, but but you will live for God, you will fear the Lord. Amen. The Lord Himself will help you, you will lead your children right. Amen. You will train the children in a way that they will never depart from the way. Amen. You know, Amen. I had a story just my mother who told me this story many, many years ago. My mother has passed away years ago. She told me a story, Rod Johnson. Let me tell you the story. She told me a story of him of a particular man. In those days, the man will go and he will steal somebody's chicken and bring it home. And he will go again and rob people. The mother, it was the, the child was an only child. Say, I don't do this. Then he will, she will hide him. And then the child will go again and bring gifts to the mother. And the mother will stay quiet and take the gifts. Then they cut the child. And they were going to kill the child. So they tied the child to the stakes. Many of us here don't know the days when they used to kill uh, thieves in one place in called Nigeria. And we thank God, not many of us are from Nigeria here. So they will tie them to stakes and they will shoot them. So they said this, this child said he wanted just one last. He said, what do you want? Your last? He said, I want to, to say something to my mother. So they brought the mother to, to him on the stakes. 
sermon and conclusion. If you see how he beat the hair of the woman, tore it, said, you never wound me. You never corrected me. All the evil I was doing, you were saying, don't worry, you are covering it all. On the stakes there, when he knew he was going to die, he beat the hair of the woman. You know, there are many, many mothers that, you know, they will dress properly, but the child will dress rewardly. They won't talk. The child doesn't need to bite your ear. Already something is biting your ear. Please, brothers and sisters, if Jesus dies, let's prepare a new generation Amen. that will continue in the work. Well, you know, you can't give what you don't have. So it starts with you. Do you fear the Lord? If you fear the Lord, it shows you are saved. If there's anything you are kicking against in the word of God, you don't fear the Lord. I don't know whether you understand what I said. If they preach something now, and you say that one I don't like, you don't fear the Lord. Because God has the final say in your life. Question is, do you fear the Lord? Will you carry out his commandments? Let's rise on our feet for a moment of prayer. I'm going to talk to the Lord in prayer. Fear the Lord. Please, it's time to pray. Don't go anywhere. It's just a short prayer. I want us to just take a few minutes to pray. A few minutes to pray. This is the time for you to talk to the Lord in prayer. From your heart, shift up your voices and start talking to the Lord in prayer. Thank the Lord for the word that he has brought to you today. Talk to God, talk to God this afternoon, talk to God. There is something God is saying to you today. There is something God is calling you to today. Don't roll your eyes against the word of God. Don't push the word of God away from you. The word has come to you. It's time for you to, re to respond. Pray and talk to God this afternoon. It's time to call upon the name of the Lord. Have you fallen short? Have you fallen short of this place? Have you fallen short of this that God has said? It's time to pray. It's time to pray. It's time to pray. Talk to God today. Tell the Lord to help you to be a doer of the world. Tell him, Lord, help me to be a doer of the world. Help me to be a doer of the world. I have had the word of God today. Lord, the Lord is talking to you about the giving up of your children. Pray and call upon his name today. You have heard the word. 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 Pray, 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 pray. Tell the Lord to help you. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. And the Bible says, even if you beat the child with a rod, he will not die. That's the extent of the punishment God expects us sometimes to wield. Very important. But before we pray finally, I want you, if you are here, and you know you have not been fearing God, you have been doing whatever you want. You have not been keeping the statutes of God. You have not been teaching your children also to keep the statutes. All eyes closed. Just raise up your hand where you are. Just raise up your hand where you are. We're going to pray together. You want to come to the knowledge of his saving grace. You want to obey every word of God. Not the one that suits you. Many times it's the one that we want. This time, God bless you. God bless you. All eyes closed. It's a personal thing. I don't want you to leave this place. I want you to leave this place with the fear of the Lord in your heart. And knowing that God is looking at you. He knows you. He said about Abraham, I know him. Does God know you? If you are not sure God knows you, this is the time for you to raise up your hand and tell him, Lord, I want you to know me. 
I'm giving my life to you today. God bless you. All eyes closed. It's a personal issue. As you are raising up your hands, quietly where you are, continue to talk to the Lord in prayer. Tell the Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Secret sin. Kissing boys, kissing girls, kissing women, kissing. All those things are sin. They are sin before God. All eyes closed. Just lift up your hand where you are. You are taking this moment to walk into God's presence. To get into the place of his favor. The Lord wants to start favoring you from today. He will favor you. He will favor your family. It's between you and God. All eyes closed. Continue to commune with God. Commune with God. Tell the Lord, I'm coming home today. I'm asking for your help. I'm asking for your grace. I'm asking, Lord, that you will strengthen my hand in my walk with you. Pray and talk to God this afternoon as you are talking to the Lord. The Lord can hear you. The Lord will hear you. The Lord will answer your cry, the cry of your heart. The Lord will answer it this very day. You are talking to the Lord from the depths of your heart, telling you are sorry for the past, telling you are changing your mind today. All eyes closed. It is between you and God. Raise up your hand to the Lord. Let God see you. Let God see you that you want him to know you. And you cannot hide it. You can hide it from man. You cannot hide it from God. You must say, no, he said, if you will not, if you will be ashamed of him here, he himself will be ashamed of you, he will not answer you. You talk to the Lord in prayer today. Tell him that you are ready. You are ready to walk with him. You are ready to live for him. Don't wait until tomorrow. Tomorrow may be too late. Today is the day, the day of salvation. The day of his mercy, the day of his mercy, that a new leaf you will turn from today. God is here to touch you. God is here to bring you into his fold. God is here to bring you into the very platform of his love. That is the God we've come here to meet today. He is waiting for you to come. He says, come, come unto me, all you that labor and are highly laden. I will bring rest. He will give you rest. There is rest for you today. There is rest for you today. There is rest for you today. Don't think when I'm okay the way I am, you have heard the word of God. Do you truly can really fear God? God loves you. He loves you. He wants you to come. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Please you can put down your hands. The Lord has seen you. It is not a man. It is God. And it is he that has said, come. And as he has called you and as you have come, the Lord will meet with you. Amen. The Lord will save you. Amen. The Lord will keep you. Amen. His grace will be showered upon your life now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The grace to live for him. Amen. The grace to walk with him. Amen. The Lord bring it upon your life in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Everything in the past that has made you deviate, divert away. Yeah. Oh Lord, I'm asking that those things be taken away from your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. He said he will bless you <clears throat> and he will bless your children. Amen. Lord, I'm asking today as the parents are committing themselves, consecrating themselves to following you, Lord, I pray that their children will follow them. Amen. And their children will run after Amen. them. Amen. There will be no diversion, no diversion in this time in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. All the hands of the enemy, because of ignorance, because of carelessness that has come into the families, that is making the children look away from you, Oh God, I'm praying those hands will be removed from the lives of those children in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, the choir told us at the beginning that they will serve you together. There will be unity in the home. There will be togetherness in the home. Lord, I'm asking that together your families here, every family represented here, they will serve you together in Jesus' name. Amen. And the blessings you have purpose, you told the Rechabites through the prophet, you said, they will not lack any person that will stand before you forever, oh God in heaven, in the families represented here. Because law is handed over to Eunice, Eunice handed over to Timothy. These families here, they will hand over the burden, the burden of faith, the burden of salvation, the burden of hope, the burden of favor. They will hand it over to their children in Jesus' name. Amen. But I thank you because I know you guys. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen.